Welcome to the first lecture in this lecture series titled Introduction to International Arbitration Practice. This lecture series will focus on the practical elements of international commercial and investment treaty arbitration. The first lecture in this lecture series will deal with arbitration agreements. The focus will be on commercial arbitration agreements. Most of us are familiar with arbitration agreements. They are in simple agreements to refer disputes to arbitration rather than resolving disputes through other forums or other methods. Such agreements could be entered into for disputes that may arise in future or once a dispute has arisen. Article 7 Subarticle 1 of the Ancitral Model Law on International Commercial Arbitration of 1985 states in this regard, an arbitration agreement may be in the form of an arbitration clause in a contract or in the form of a separate agreement. An identical provision is also contained in Section 7, Subsection 2 of India's Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996. Links to the Unsettled Model Law and the latest version of India's Arbitration and Conciliation Act are provided in the description to this video. Arbitration agreements, as we had stated, can be either in the form of arbitration clauses forming a part of an agreement or in the form of a separate sub arbitration agreement. Now, if it is in the form of a separate arbitration agreement, then it is called in arbitration parlance as submission agreement. Arbitration clauses are usually part of a main agreement. Here, the agreement precedes the dispute. In other words, the arbitration clause provides for reference of disputes that may arise in the future to arbitration. Therefore, from a chronological point of view, the agreement comes first and then the disputes, if any, come later. Submission agreements are agreements for reference of disputes to arbitration. That is, they do not form a part of some other agreement that they are standalone agreements. But the purpose of the agreement is to agree to arbitrate certain disputes. Usually, sub submission agreements are entered into after disputes arise. An arbitration clause refers to reference of future disputes to arbitration. It is possible that submission agreements could replace prior arbitration agreements as well. Now, which one is better? Arbitration clause or submission agreement ask? The answer is it depends. But there are two factors that you should consider. One, it is very difficult for parties to reach a submission agreement after a dispute has arisen. That is because parties are in their litigating mode or litigating tendency and therefore it is very difficult for a consensus to, to be reached. The other factor is the time between entering into an arbitration agreement in the main agreement especially that is in the context of arbitration clauses and when disputes actually arise might be too long and by the time the dispute has arisen the arbitration agreement in form of the arbitration clause may not be suitable for resolving that dispute. Parties therefore opt for the lesser evil and take the risk of providing for resolution of future disputes through arbitration clause. This is because if no arbitration agreement is agreed upon parties may have to choose to litigate in the local courts, which may not be desirable for various reasons, including non-flexible procedures, formalities, lengthy proceedings, etc. In fact, the language might be different. Whatever be the case, an arbitration agreement has to satisfy the formal criteria laid down in the relevant law. We will now discuss the Indian law on this. Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996 contains different treatment for different types of arbitration agreements. Parts 1 and 2 of the 1996 Act contain two different types of definition of arbitration agreement. Part 1 of the Act, which will be the focus in this, in this lecture, 
is applicable where the place of arbitration is in India. Section 21B states arbitration agreement means an agreement referred to in section 7. Section 7 subsection 1 states in this part arbitration agreement means an agreement by the parties to submit to arbitration all or certain disputes which have arisen or which may arise between them in respect of a defined legal relationship whether contractual or not. Thus three main ingredients are to be satisfied. One, there should be an agreement between the parties. Parties is defined in section 21H to mean a party to an arbitration agreement. The second ingredient is the agreement should be to submit to arbitration. And the third ingredient is that the submission for arbitration should be for disputes of defined legal relationship. The expression defined legal relationship has been explained in the case of Vidya Drolia versus Durga Trading Corporation, a decision of the Supreme Court of India rendered in 2021, where the Supreme Court held in Para 24. The, ex the expression legal relationship again is not defined in the Arbitration Act means a relationship which gives rise to legal obligations and duties and therefore confers a right. Now, the expression whether contractual or not in section 7.1 conveys the meaning that even if the dispute pertains to something that is not contractual, like for instance a tort that is arbitrary. In other words, parties can freely enter into arbitration agreements to resolve even such disputes through arbitration. Section 7.3 states that the arbitration agreement shall be in writing. So does Article 7.2 of the Model Law. Now we make a brief detour to the separability doctrine to the extent useful from a practical perspective. In simple, separability doctrine enables the arbitration clause to be treated separately from the main agreement, although that arbitration clause forms a part of the main agreement. The concept of separability provides doctrinal justification to afford jurisdiction to the arbitral tribunal to decide even on questions that are relating to validity of the arbitration clause rather than going to court for decision on such questions. Article 16.1 of the Model Law recognizes this and reads, The arbitral tribunal may rule on its own jurisdiction including any objections with respect to the existence or validity of the arbitration agreement. For that purpose, an arbitration clause which forms part of a contract shall be treated as an agreement independent of the other terms of the contract. A decision by the arbitral tribunal that the contract is null and void shall not entail ipso jure the invalidity of the arbitration clause. This has also been incorporated in Section 16.1 of the 1996 Act, which reads, The arbitral tribunal may rule on its own jurisdiction, including ruling on any objections with respect to the existence or validity of the arbitration agreement. And for that purpose, an arbitration clause which forms part of a contract shall be treated as an agreement independent of the other terms of the contract and a decision by the arbitral tribunal that the contract is null and void shall not ipso jure in, invalidate the arbitration clause. The first part of both the provisions which are virtually identical is the competence doctrine or it is also called as competence competence doctrine or the competence dela competence. Okay. Whichever language uh, if you talk, the, the basic point is that the arbitral tribunal is empowered to rule on its own jurisdiction or in other words the arbitral tribunal is competent to decide on its own jurisdiction including ruling on any objections with respect to the existence or validity of the arbitration agreement and for that purpose there is a doctrinal justification that is given in clauses a and b of section 16 which are actually identical to the second part of article 16 of the modern law right which is quoted here 
that is arbitration clause which forms part of a contract shall be treated as an independent agreement and the, even if the arbitral tribunal decides that the contract is null and void it shall not divest the arbitration uh, arbitrary arbitral tribunal of the jurisdiction to decide on the issue so to 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 address these as these logical aspects the separability doctrine has been put in place now what about submission agreements what happens to separability doctrine in submission agreements the separability doctrine also operates in submission agreements but differently this has been discussed in detail in the decision of the us supreme court in rent a center versus jackson where it was held the application of separability doctrine does not depend on the nature of the remaining portion of the agreement so it doesn't really matter whether the main agreement is something else other than an arbitration clause or if the main agreement is also a submission agreement which contains many other clauses relating to the submission to arbitration therefore it applies that is the separability doctrine applies even to submission agreements the delegation provision contained within an arbitration agreement that is the provision that provides for resolution of any disputes about the validity or scope of the arbitration agreement by the arbitral tribunal is itself separable from the more general arbitration agreement it was therefore held by the us supreme court in this case the underlying contract is itself an arbitration agreement but that makes no difference application of the severability rule does not depend on the substance of the remainder of the contract note here that separability and severability are the same so that's all in this lecture in in the next lecture we will be dealing with an interesting topics topic which has immense practical significance for drafting arbitration agreements hope you enjoyed the first lecture do write to lawbadri at gmail.com that is lawbadri at gmail.com for feedback and comments bye bye and stay safe by the way the links to the arbitration act or the unsettled model law and the two judgments that are quoted in this lecture that is vidya drolia and rente center are provided here so feel feel free to access them and happy reading bye bye